Hello and welcome to the Armory. I am Archaic. With me is Zavel. Hey. We're going through some of your replays, aren't we? Yes. Yes, we are. So this is our first uh, official lesson. Um, so just to sort of talk about what sort of the process is for everyone online, um, I got Zavel to play about 10 games you've played. And yep. uh, I've gone through the replays and sort of picked them apart, sort of looked at them, but not looked at them so nitpicky, looked at them for broad strokes because currently you're a silver player. That's yep. right. Yep, silver player. And uh, so we really want to focus on big broad strokes, big huge holes in your gameplay. And once we iron those out, then we can work on more specific things like builds, openings, um, specific strategies and things of that sort. So when we first talked, we talked a lot about basics. We talked about how do we play with all our pieces. If you think about StarCraft, it's um, a lot of people compare it to chess. And I think in some ways it is like chess. The problem being, if you come to a chess game with less pieces than your opponent, you have a huge disadvantage. Like, no one would ever play a game like that. So we first address the major issues of all new players, which is building supply depots, building SCVs, and I'm blanking. Spending your money, right? Spend your the money. Most basic Macro. thing. Spend your, your money. money. <laughs> oh, I love blanking. It's so satisfying. Yes. So um, this is one of your replays. We're just going to jump over into that replay. And we're going to get sort of your view as we sort of power through this replay. One of the things that a lot of people do is they sort of look at their replays wrong. Sort of a tip when you're working through your own replays, uh, Zavel, I was going to call you John, but we're working on using our usernames, <laughs> is starting from the end. That's sort of studying the effects, sort of the what happens because of your decisions as you play allows you to go back and fix the causes. So that's what we're going to do here. But first, we're going to go through the game, and let's load it up here. Okay, so I'm going to play, game and resumed. we are in the game. So why don't you talk a bit about how you play SCV right ready. now, in general. Well, I start off by building an SCV, putting SCV the... Ready command center in a uh, in number four and then uh, on my when I have nine supply I throw an SCV over and build a supply depot and then send the queue back to the mineral patch right. after that 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 SCV will build a barracks oh, and man. then I take that that SCV I think goes to the mineral line is what I do SCV yeah and then the, but the SCV that went before that went to build another supply depot and then I'm building marines as soon as I can. When it's building, I put Upgrade. it on a Complete. on a hot key, and then I yeah yeah. So yeah, definitely get my uh, ooh killed. A, I killed an SCV first blood. Yeah. yeah so we're definitely blood. seeing you build a lot more supply <laughs> depots than you need, right? I totally scouted. I totally scouted. Okay. <laughs> yes. I think I have a note where it says uh, it says. Uh, First game scouted. he scouted or something like that. First yeah, game and I sent and I back. sent him to not his base. <laughs> See that? Sent him to like the fourth. <laughs> what was that? SCV yeah, ready. yeah. It looks like I built. I prematurely built a supply depot. SCV although ready. now yeah. I'm caught up and I think I'm going to get supply PC blocked. Boy. Right, right. Yeah, so, I'm totally getting supply blocked. I got ahead. SCV now I'm getting ready. supply blocked. Yes, yes. Instead of just up. staying with the flow. I'm like, oh, I'm ahead. Forget about it. Yes. And then I completely forget about it. Oh, I think I might be saved by the construction. Yeah, I'm, I was saved by the construction of the command, of the center. command center. But yes. only just. And now my building. Oh, and I am. I'm building some supply depots. So I was lucky there. I may have been momentarily um, there. I'm not building any marines. Yeah, yeah. Come so on. We look, you are spending your money, which is yeah. what we talked about, right? Yeah. So when we talk about sort of the mechanics and uh, macro, we talk about supply depots, which you've done 
really, like upgrade. pretty dang Complete. good job. As far as supply blocks, you haven't been hard supply blocked yet, which is amazing, right? That's the first hurdle. Yeah. And then we talk about um, building ready. SCVs. And if we just take a look at the unit count, you're slightly behind your opponent. So you're not quite doing a good job at consistently producing SCVs, which is fine, right? We're working on that. Those are the first steps. Oh, yeah, yeah. You did Widow Mind Drop. I got a scan off. Yeah. <laughs> him off, so right. it's good he had enough energy at that moment. But he did. Uh, did Add he kill some? Complete. He must have killed some. So, Upgrade. so uh, one thing I did talk about was production buildings. Yes. Um, sort of how many production buildings research. do you want Complete. per base here? Yeah, you said three per base, right? That, that's a yeah, that's a great number to sort of aim for. Okay. Yeah. One like of the great there. things I did see in this game was you building a turret in your mineral line. Yes. In other games, you get boned so bad with banshees. Yeah. Because you don't I have forgot. a turret. Because I totally forgot. And then, well, once you forget and there's cloaked banshees, good luck building one. <laughs> right. So. Yeah. So yeah. you you are building a lot of tech buildings. So we, we are seeing two engineering bases, two armies. Yeah. And then a push, and what yeah, happens I was, here? I was planning, they, he had sieged tanks, and I moved up, <laughs> and his siege tanks killed all of my marines. <laughs> all of my marines. And, I mean, he, yeah. He had a banshee. I thought he had, I thought he had had, oh, I killed a tank. I think I killed one tank. And I guess there's there's another tank coming, a medvac. If I look back here, which I mean I didn't know another tank, but yeah, I was I was building some hellbats. Yeah. So I decided to not waste my time and just. So you were wait. going along, you were I was, building stuff, you were doing yeah. well with supply depots. You're doing you're actually ahead in SCVs by a reasonable amount now, um, because you have two command centers. He only has one. Oh um, yeah. yeah. And. Uh, <coughs> And you ha you've kept your money low, and then something like this happens. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you... I get siege tank noobed. You just lose. I just lose because I don't know, not prepared or something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So Pretty much. What we're gonna do now is, like I said before, we like working backwards through replays. So we're gonna go take a look now. That now that we have sort of a general idea, you did pretty good um, as far as the basics, as far as building supply depots. I have a lot of Vespian. Building SCVs, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's. Could have built. I don't think I had any units that needed Vespian. Nope, Marines and Hellbats. No yeah. Vespian. <laughs> Marines and Hellbats, baby. And uh, we're not too worried about what you're building. We just want you to build things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So let's take a look here. So at the end of the game, I'm just gonna jump to sort of right before. Um, uh, I've written down in my notes 11.34, so we're just going to jump over game, all game, my stuff game. there. And we're going to look at the income tab. So at this end of the game, if you open up your income tab, you can see um, you were mining... I'm way 50, ahead. Like almost double. 1,500 minerals per minute. He is mining 800. So, yeah. And also double the Vespian. Yeah. So, how many players you think would want to be in this situation? Just looking at those numbers. Just looking at numbers, it looks like I'm winning. <laughs> Every player that has ever played wants to see that, right? So at this point in the game, you have what I guess we could call a massive, massive economic lead. Yep. Massive, like nearly double, right? And that makes sense, right? When you look, he has one command center, you have two. You have more SCVs than him. Yeah, they're both almost <coughs> saturated. Almost right, with right. 16 each. So, Okay, and the second thing we're going to look at, so we've looked at the income tab, and this income tab just sort of tracks how much you're making every minute. We're going to look at spending. So that is just the hotkeys, S. We're going to compare here. So our, our villain here, I'm not, I'm not going to use his name. <laughs> our, villain, <laughs> our villain has spent 3750 in his income so that's things like command centers SCVs things of that nature he spent 918 in technology so we know you've spent a lot in technology you have multiple engineering bays multiple um, yeah. armories probably didn't need those <laughs> and then we look at army and you've spent about half of what he spent in his army yeah so these are just broad strokes here 
So, <coughs> I, I have a question. Imagine uh, me and you are going to run a race. Winner buys the other one lunch. <laughs> How fast do you have to run to win the race and to make me buy lunch? And sort of explain yourself. I, I'd have to run faster than you. <laughs> well said. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> so, so very, very simply, it's like me plus a hair, right? Yeah. You just need to run. Anything more. Anything more. Anything more, Anything and you more. win. And in StarCraft, it's very similar. We talk about this concept kind of like edges. So StarCraft, there's a winner and a loser. And all it takes is like the most minuscule edge to win a game. The only variable is, is the opponent. So remember... Uh, sorry. Remember that all you have to do is run faster than your opponent. So when we look at your spending, we talk about this sort of concept of running faster than them. So when we talk about spending an economy, you spent a little bit more than him. And that's a good thing because if you look at your economy now, it is massively larger than his economy. Yeah. And you've only spent a little bit more. So that's a very good use of your economy. When we look at technology, you have spent three times what he spent. An incredible <laughs> amount. Like he's spent basically nothing like he yes. has no engineering bay no armories i have two of each and all he's spent it on is i don't even know what he spent it on yeah they're probably like stim he and probably like has stim probably a stim couple combat other things. shields I, I'm, nope, no yeah. combat shields uh so <laughs> i guess he must and have uh stim. so overspending is what can cause um, drastic swings in games. So when we were looking at this game, we were talking about how good your economy was. We were talking about how well you're building SCVs, how well you're building supply depots, how well you're spending your money. Because if you look at his money, we'll just jump over to the game here. If you look at his money, it's banking 1300 So he's banking a 1000 more than what you have. And so you're doing a very good job of your spending. But the problem is, is you've overspent drastically yeah which has caused more army by yeah. double <laughs> where he just so it doesn't matter my army's better his army was twice as big <laughs> yeah he just he just wins you know just wins the game it's it's simple it's it's and that's that's sort of something that i don't want you to miss <coughs> is always be thinking the only variable in every game is your opponent so you only have to be beating that player by a tiny tiny bit to win the game and that that goes to show really well in your economy because you're barely ahead in economy but you're drastically have a higher income but on the flip side your army is pit pittens pittens it, it's dead <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's dead my army is dead <laughs> so all my friends are dead <laughs> oh man <laughs> It's a dog. <laughs> I hear the dog. My dog's freaking out. It's okay, Daisy. It's okay. Hi, Daisy. It's Hi. Okay. Yes, I have a wonderful little dog, and her name is Daisy. <laughs> so, so, so knowledge is power. That's what I'm trying to get at. If you know what your opponent is doing, all you have to do is just do what he's doing a little bit better, and you will win the game. So, in the early game... When you have limited information, we talk about playing very safe. So the things you want to be spending your money, um, Zavel, is on economy and army. Why do you think we spend so much on economy early game? Uh, the further you get ahead, the like it's a, it's a, it's a multiplier, right? You get if the bigger it is, then it just kind of like is that much forever. Yes, it's a wonderful yeah. snowball effect that'll snowball. happen. Snowball. That's the perfect word. Yes. Yes. So as as you sort of add to your economy, if your opponent falls behind, you're going to start snowballing because you're going to have more resources to reinvest into other things, right? Yeah. If you take that money that you get ahead, reinvest it in the economy, you get further ahead, and that's how large edges are made, and that's how games are won and lost. So so when we talk about solid players, solid players um, – 
make a lot of units. So always be thinking safety in numbers, not necessarily compositions or technology upgrades. Yeah. That like if sort I'd of thing. put if I'd put all that money in tech into just Marines, I would have I would have won. Basically. Yeah, you'd be I would have I would have had over double the number of Marines I had. And, and I would you... have been able to go yeah. in there and actually kill that other tank because I already got one killed. So we would have got the other killed as well. Yes. So so the more in information you have, the more drastic you can do spending in these different areas. Always sort of think of it as like a, uh, what are those things called? Venn diagrams, the, the circles. Think of like economy, technology, army. Early on, you always want to be focusing on economy and army because army allows you to survive things like this. And economy has this wonderful snowball effect that helps you sort of back and forth. Later in the game, that's when technology becomes incredibly important. Because when we, when we talk about sort of reaching that max, when you're hitting the maximum amount of units that your supply can um, supply. Uh, can be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when we talk about you hitting that, then we look at how can we improve this composition or how can we improve um, these units that we have through upgrades through different technology and through different compositions. But remember, safety in numbers, safety in numbers, especially, especially early game. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so we're going to jump into a second replay, which is a TVP on Newkirk Precinct. Precinct. I, 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 uh, I'm poor at <coughs> pronouncing. And I'll just invite you to the game here. Oh, I have to leave this one. Yeah, it would it would be Which? wonderful if you <laughs> joined me in our little adventure. Join. I'll join. Yes. So, so always be thinking. What is my opponent's doing, um, or where is my opponent spending his resources, so that you know where to allocate your own resources. Is this the right one? Versus a random? Um, oh, this is versus an AI. Yeah. That's not right. Um, that's that's you against an AI. <laughs> it's not even <laughs> me against an AI. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> what was the map again? Newkirk. Newkirk. Okay. Oh, no. I didn't invite you to the game. Ugh. So yes, you Kirk see. Precinct versus Fell. Okay. Join game. <coughs> awesome, awesome. Okay, we'll load up this game then. And we'll jump over to it. All right, let's speed this up a little bit and follow your viewpoint. SCB ready. I liked this game. SCB this is probably what happens. Oh, this is th is this the one that SCB I raffle ready. stomped? Uh, or is this I wouldn't SCB say that. Ready. I wouldn't say that. I love no. this game. Okay. So, so what we're looking for here SCB. is sort of how um, knowing where to spend your money is is the next step to having money. Because you have a lot of money. You had more money. Oh, wow. I'm going really fast. I apologize. So times to eight. To watch. Game There's a bunch of. <laughs> Let me just slow stuffed. that down a bit. Oh. Um, okay. Here. We'll just jump back. Ah. I was okay. going way too fast for anyone to view that. Okay. So. Game resumed. Why don't you talk a bit about sort of are you doing a similar thing in every matchup or so are you sort of switching it up How more or less yeah in um versus protoss i've been trying to throw in some more marauders at the beginning just because they have that bonus versus armored which is good against the uh stalkers which seems to make a big improvement right. versus just building marines plus something for my gas SCB to go into ready. right so here i uh, actually this is before i watched a uh, uh, day SCB nine and he ready made a, a side comment on a, on a fun day Monday about building a second barracks before building your orbital. And I was like, oh yeah, 
I could totally build the orbital first if I didn't build that barracks. So there I have two barracks instead of one. And then I... Do I even build orbital? I may not even build uh, orbital. You do I may eventually. Have I event... Okay, so I, I completely forgot about the orbital, which is pretty fantastic. I've got a... Got a S couple SCVs just sitting around doing nothing, which is great. <laughs> there we go. Back yeah. to it. It's good that you're noticing that, because that's something I wrote down as to mention, and you're noticing. So this is really good for you to sort of watch this over. Armed and ready. And I see you starting go. to tech, tech up a little bit. Tech lab and go. And I've got a little... Oh, no. That's his minerals. minerals are low. And, uh, reactor looks like, so I'm trying to build stuff. Yeah, you're trying to get units out. Oh, you're doing really job. good as far as spending your money. You're doing really good with the supply depots. So that's something that we always have I'll to sort on. of have <laughs> on the burn. Oh, and he sort of moves up with some stalkers here. And you're you're okay, right? You're behind the supply depot wall. And then what happens? And then I found out he was, I don't know, orgating me or something. <laughs> he had lots of units. He had lots of units. That's what happened. Yeah. So, you got a little over eager chasing those stalkers, and yep. then he showed up with all these units, and you're like, "Oh no!" Base and then he had some zealots also, and I couldn't produce game fast paused. enough to catch up. Right, right. Paused. So I'm just gonna pause the game here because I want to do what we did last game. I want to look at the income tab, and I want to look at the spending tab. So we'll show up the income tab here and see what we see. So um, I'm a little bit ahead in economy. Yeah, yeah. It, like it, you have 24 workers to 19. And uh, when we talk about optimal um, saturation, do you remember what that was for one bit, one base? Uh, 16 plus the three in each gas. Yeah, 24. So you have hit the optimal um, saturation and you're making that command center. So that is really, yeah. really great play, right? And we're seeing that you're ahead in the economy, which is common with, with uh, Terran because of the mule, especially on one base, and as you add more orbitals. And so you've slightly pulled ahead. So that's what we've talked about before. Having these really good uh, mechanics, building supply depots, building SUVs, allows you to pull ahead, and you have gotten ahead. You're slightly ahead here. And then let's go ahead and look into the spending tab. <coughs> and we sort of see, a, a, I guess what you would say, a similar thing to the last game. Yeah. Um, so your economy, you're ahead by about 900 or so, 2,700 to 18. Yeah. And your technology, you're ahead by 100 and, or 200 something. Yeah. Um, 225. Yep. 200 and change. And then uh, your army, again. 600 be or 700 behind. Yeah. Yeah. A chunk behind. A chunk behind. So if you... Why don't we just open it up so we see the whole map, jump over to his base, sort of what do you see? Sort of explain, if we were thinking about the game as either focusing on economy, army, or technology, sort of what do you see when you look at his base? Well, he went warp gate uh, on three gates. Only There's took one gas. Four gates, four gates. Was there four? There. Where's the fourth? Okay, I don't know. <laughs> oh, there it is, right off to the left, just didn't put it with those. Yeah, so he made just, he just made four gates. So he basically spent the least amount that Protoss can spend in technology, which yeah. is to get warp gate basically, and then just purely focused on army, right? Yeah. So if you had known this, how do you think you would have reacted back at home? I would have built um, another barracks probably with the reactor, started pumping out some more units, not built this command center or two engineering bays. Uh, yeah. Right. Because Five known. Yeah. at this point, you're ahead in the economy, right? Yeah. So the longer the game goes, the more of an advantage you will be as far as how much money you've spent. <coughs> and uh, so if you had known that information, it would have been very easy for you to decide on the right track, right? Yeah. And uh, so when we talk... Like I was saying before, you just have to barely win. If you just barely have enough to survive against his four gate, you're going to have a very large advantage because the entire time he tried to four gate you, 
you were slowly eking away an economic advantage. And either if you had kept that command center and just built more barracks, or if you had not just built the engineering bays and built two barracks. Yeah. Things like that um, allow you to just roll over opponents because you see what they're doing. You know how to react perfectly. And even if you don't react perfectly, you're still going to end up quite far ahead because you have this snowball effect. So um, just a couple other things I wanted to talk about. Just, just sort of so you get a sort of deeper understanding of how Terran production works. When we talk about a one base economy, you said we want three production buildings, right? Yeah. So right now you have three with a factory and yep. you're getting a reactor on that. So that's a lot of production. Yeah. So that's going to hinder you in your army value. You see how it, did that sort of makes sense? Yeah. Right, right. And what we talked about is early game, you really need strength in numbers, strength in numbers, yeah. strength in numbers. Yeah, because so, I'm thinking like before I, I should be doing that because I'm thinking I'm going to have the space because it's building, but it takes a long time to build. Mm -hmm. And so I shouldn't be building the stuff that I is good after I have the base until after I have the base. <coughs> right. That's a great thought process to help you have a lot of things. And that's what's that will that's what will really get stuff. you past this silver, this gold or sorry, goes silver, bronze, gold. Is that how it works? No, bronze, silver, silver gold, gold platinum um, sort of gets you past Masters. the silver hump very easily is just making a lot more stuff early game and then adding that technology later in the game when you have that sort of flexibility of six gases 50 something SCVs mining and things of that nature the other thing I wanted to mention here if we just jump back to the game is this reactor I want to focus on this reactor on the barracks and this is sort of a little note, but I think it'll help you a lot early game. I want you sort of as a general rule, general, ugh, general rule to not use reactors early in the game. Okay. Here's why. So when we talk about a reactor, the build time is 50 seconds. Okay. So when you look at the marine build time, it's 25 seconds, which means if that barracks is making a reactor in the same it's time that that reactor two, finishes, two marines. you could have two Marines. So right? it takes a full another 50 seconds to make up what it lost. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you'll have three Marines by the time the reactor has two, but then you'll have four Marines when the time has four and eventually that reactor will pay itself back. But that's what it is. Think of the reactor as a technology that in the long term will increase your production, but early game it's gonna hamp it's gonna cause problems. Still gonna I'm still gonna get killed by four gate. <laughs> You're gonna get killed. I'd be better off building another barracks. Exactly. Than building the, the, so the, early game Yeah. Should go want, for actually three buildings, not yeah. one in a and you a, don't need as reactor. much gas as you're getting. So you're getting So two I'm just getting my gas too early, eh? Because is is? minerals is a lot easier to get especially early game. So if you would rather get a barracks and have those two Marines built instead of that reactor, a barracks takes 60 seconds, so it's just slightly longer than the reactor. But if you build a barracks and continuous Marine production, you'll have three barracks, which is the exact same production as a reactor have, and you won't have that hiccup early game. Right. So always think of the reactor as a technology, not as something that will increase your army gotcha. so that's just a specific note of how we can pump up your production early game lots of barracks you know three production is a great number to work with against a four gate sometimes going up to four four barracks or something of that nature or building bunkers is a fine way just to ensure that you will maintain that macro lead and eventually win the game right Okay, so that's enough for replay analysis. This has been part one of the armory. <laughs> Just had to throw that in there. Um, so when we come back, we're going to go through some early game examples and hopefully help you, Zabel, um, focus on 
gleaning information specifically for the early game Terran versus Protoss. I think Protoss has a lot of openings that can really mess with Terrans, as yeah. you saw with the Foregate, and they have very different openings. They have extreme tech openings, like the Dark Templar Rush, where if you don't have detection, you'll lose. They'll have things like Foregate, where if you don't make enough stuff, you'll lose. They have things like Oracles. They have things like Nexus First. So oh we have to be gosh. really careful as Terrans in understanding what the Protoss is doing, whether he's spending it on economy, technology, or army, so that we can correctly adapt to how they're playing. So remember, you just have to run faster than your opponent. Yes. All right, and with that, we will be right back. This is the army. I'm Archaic. This is Zavel. Thanks for watching.